Okay, everybody, let's get going. I know that um, this is quite a f distant location, to put it mildly. Uh, so I know there's going to be a few people coming in, we've heard. Uh, and I know at the end of this, you're probably going to be frantically running to the next one to make sure you uh, get in early. So we want to, I, I thought we'd get going. I also discussed with Sanjeevni, who you'll see later in the demo, we're going to try and get everything we can share with you into a little bit of a shorter time window, maybe an hour, so that you have the time to get to your next sessions. I know that it's been a bit of a rat race and bun fight to get into some of the sessions. So uh, hopefully we can uh, keep this a little tighter for you and give you a little extra time to get to your next session. So um, we're, um, my name is Cyril Belikov. I'm from the Surface team um, based in Redmond. I have spent almost 20 years at the company. Um, uh, a lot of that I spent in our South African subsidiary, about 12 of those, and then the remainder out in, in our Redmond head offices. I worked in the office team for a while, um, and now for the last two years or so in the surface team. Um, the point of this presentation is really to level set people. Uh, if you're coming looking for level 400 content, this is not the right session. We have sessions on that, and I'll point you to them. This is just level setting. Uh, we've had a lot of questions in the, in the last month and even in the last day since we've been here. You know, why did you build Surface? What's the difference between Surface Pro 3 and Surface 3? And how, do, how should we think about it? How, how, what types of users should we, we be targeting in our organizations to be using these devices? So we'll take you through a little bit of that. Uh, Sanjeevni will come and do a demo on some of our uh, deployment and security, um, quick demo to give you a taste of what the other sessions will, will cover and, and feel like. Um, and then we'll, we'll uh, close on, on some really cool, exciting things uh, about our super secret lab back in Redmond, Building 87. Um, we're a little bit of a different team at Microsoft. We're a startup, we're a challenger in the industry. Uh, so we like to run things a little differently. You'll notice that this will probably be the only slide I use in the template. Um, we don't normally conform uh, to templates. Um, and we have stuff we want to give away. Uh, so we have Surface Pro 3s down here. Um, I have some other cards here that you might find interesting. So if you have uh, excitement on, a f on something you like, if you're just generally excited, um, please let us know. Jump up and say I'm pumped or whatever you want to say. Um, uh, I'm certainly excited that I uh, get to break the ice this morning with all of you. Um, and let's keep it uh, as interactive as we can. As I said, I want to try to keep it to an hour, but I'm, I'm happy to take questions or um, uh, see how things go. So um, be, to get things kicked off, uh, what I do want to do is actually go and show you the other sessions. Uh, this is the slide that uh, my very last slide in the deck, which actually uh, uh, some of you... Uh, might be looking at in the deck online. This is just to tell you what sessions, other Surface sessions you should go to. I'm gonna give you a little bit of color. The first session um, is a guy by the name of Brett Muzzy and his team. And Brett is essentially, it might sound weird, but he is the enterprise software lead in the Surface team. And so he builds all the firmware, all the drivers, uh, all the updates that come out every few Tuesdays. Um, he's, in, he's in contact with all our component suppliers and pushing them to improve their firmware and drivers. So whenever you guys consume our, uh, our updates, our deployment guidance, uh, or have really specific detailed questions about a particular software thing or related to how we think about deploying Surface, he's the guy. There is nobody in the company that you want to talk to except Brett and his team. Um, the next session is by our lead designer, um, and his name is Rolf, and we are, I feel really uh, uh, honored to have him here. He is uh, he's the designer of Surface. Uh, he invented the design, he thinks about design, he thinks about things that you and I don't think about, but he knows what you're thinking before you think it. He has a degree in taste. Um, and so he really thinks about what does the design feel like, what does it look like, what is the level of the kickstand, how should it perform, where should the uh, ports be for the best experience for the user, how does that interact with the software. He's really at design. So he will talk in a lot of detail about how we think about the design at a hardware level. That is also, you should think about level 300-ish level. He's a um, design engineer and our lead designer. 
Um, we then have two other sessions, uh, building the Surface Pro 3, which uh, and I will touch on a little bit about how we thought about Surface Pro 3, but that session is a full hour plus on each of the components, what do we did, what do we put inside the box, uh, take, let's strip away the screen and show you what's underneath. Um, it's quite an exciting uh, session. And then the last one about support. What did we learn from all of your um, experiences and what uh, support uh, um, topics come up as we re react to your deployments and what you're trying to do inside your customers? So I wanted to call those out. Those are great, great sessions, really, really deep and detailed sessions I encourage you to get to. Anybody like those? Woo! Okay. <laughs> Here is a 50% off Surface 3 at the Microsoft Store. Good for you, buddy. I told you to get excited. <laughs> um, one thing I'll warn you, um, my belt broke last night. And I promise you I wasn't hanging from any chandeliers or anything. So my pants might like, loosen a little bit. I'm not trying to do anything, I promise. It's just, uh, just what's going on. And they gave me this heavy thing, pulling my pants down too. Like, I feel pretty weird. But anyway, um, so uh, one thing about these cards, if I do give more of them away, uh, May 12th is the deadline, so make sure you go and use them at the Microsoft Store. Um, right, so I think we should get going. I have a little bit of video to kick us off, get the energy going, and uh, then we'll take it from there. Okay, two hands come for a Surface 3, Surface Pro 3. There you go. Come on, I told you, you need action. Okay, second place. <laughs> I'm trying to get to the next screen. Okay. Um, so one last piece of housekeeping. Uh, there, I know there's slides up on the uh, um, on Yammer uh, and where you gather all the slides. There, there's a set of slides that I'll cover at the end that are not up there, um, and that's our, about our, um, our lab in Building 87 where we do all the prototyping. And I'll share a little bit about that, which is pretty cool. Uh, Rolf will talk about it a little bit tomorrow in the design session, but you won't find those slides up on on Yammer. So just a little note on that. So um, if I can get going. Oops. Great. Let's um, give you a little bit of a taste on how we think about Surface. Um, Surface we've always envisioned as a family of devices, and it's now becoming more uh, of a reality as we brought out the Surface 3, and I'll talk about that in a, in, in a, in a minute. But when you think about Surface generally, uh, even including the Surface Hub, we really want to create premium experiences. Premium experiences, whether the, someone is using it for a simple task or someone is using it for something that's more complicated. Really, really simple, um, exper uh, simple premium experiences. Uh, keeping things simple for the user, whether it's the pen. The pen has got a lot of technology in it, but it's really intended to feel like you are writing on a piece of paper. Um, there are a few people in the audience I can see taking notes, and when you talk to somebody that uses the Surface Pro um, 3 and its pen, they will really tell you it feels like the ink is coming from the pen. That's really how we designed it. Great premium experiences. And the, the attention to detail matters because if you're writing with this pen and, and the ink lags or it's the wrong, um, uh, it's the wrong levels of, uh, of, 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 of the feel of the, 
of the line of the ink, it really doesn't feel great. And then you stop using it because it's not the same experience. So we're really focused on those premium experiences, but also on being um, on business ready. And so making sure we have, we're obviously a Windows device, so we can be managed and secured, but we have the right hardware pieces around warranty, support, serviceability that businesses uh, are looking for. Behind all of this, we really want to bring in the rest of the company, which is Windows and Office 365 and Azure, and make sure we are a great platform for that. And I'll talk a little bit about that in a minute or two. But I wanted to pause and just give you a sense of when you think about any Surface device, these are the things you should expect from it. These are the things that we will promise when we build every Surface device, that we have great premium experiences, we are ready for business, and that we are bringing through the great experiences uh, from Microsoft, whether it's Office with OneNote, whether it's the uh, you know, ability to connect to the cloud and, and, and have those um, additional Azure apps on it. Um, well, this gives you a, a sense of, man, this click is. Um, I, I wanted to take a step back and think about where have we come from. And just to give you that context, a lot of people ask, so why did you build Surface? What is it for? What are you trying to do? So let me take you back, way back, maybe a year, two years before Windows 8 shipped. You all know where the industry was. I don't have to go and put up a slide that's from Gartner that says Windows 7, blah, 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 laptops, iPad introduction, Windows ecosystem had no touch, blah, 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 blah. Like you know all of that stuff, right? Phones were in a place, great. Um, we were dreaming about what Windows 8 could be. And we were tasked with the job to bring it to life in hardware from a company that wants to dream about what's possible. Based on the slide I told you earlier, we want premium experiences, we want to bring through the rest of Microsoft. And at a really high level, there were a few things that we, were th we thought about. One was, as I said, how do we bring Windows to life? Not only Windows 8, but the dream of what Windows 10 was going to become too. Um, you might not believe it, but we actually start thinking about Windows, multiple versions of Windows 2, uh, over multiple years. And while we iterated on Windows 8 based on all of your feedback to Windows 8.1 and Windows 8.1 update, uh, Windows 10 was always you know, what, what was coming as well. And so we were thinking about the Windows 8 and Windows 10, what devices we could bring to market to help Windows uh, shine. Primarily, we wanted to create a great tablet and a tablet that had touch so we could show off Windows 10. But we just didn't want to create another tablet, which brings me to my next point. We wanted to solve a real problem in, the bus in, in our business uh, that our customers face. And that problem was relatively simple. The problem was, I want a tablet, but I need a laptop. That's what a user will tell you. They are mostly carrying two devices in addition to their phone. Why? Because they want lightweight, on the go, a little bit of snacking on some apps. But when they want to get stuff done, their safety blanket is their laptop. So the problem statement is I have two devices, I have to buy two devices. That's what the end user says. What do you say? Well, I need budget for those two devices. I need to secure them deploy them, I need to update them, and now most likely it's a laptop running Windows and an iPad. Now you have multiple operating systems, two different sets of apps to do the same thing with the same user. You now have to update all those things. That's a problem statement. For the user, it's pretty big. They have to carry these things, but for IT, it's bigger, right? You all know that. It's no, no surprise, but we were thinking about this before Windows 8. How do we create a, a piece of hardware that solved that problem statement so that we can be true to our legacy of desktop, but also think about the future of modern touch, pen, uh, touch and pen experiences? And that's how we thought about Surface. Surface solves that problem. And of course, did we, we try to hit it in Surface RT, and we got some feedback from our consumers about Surface RT, and uh, more feedback from people like you about Surface RT. Um, and uh, we w continued on that journey, but we wanted to stick to that goal of trying to solve that problem statement. The third thing, which I mentioned earlier, is bringing through and lighting up 
software and services on this device. Because it's a mobile, powerful device, so it would be pretty silly if you can't do awesome things with Office 365 on it. It's, in, it's intended to be mobile and connected to the cloud. Uh, and so uh, things like OneNote and with a pen you can click and you know, launch OneNote and then click again and save to the cloud. Those are the types of things that you can only do when you have hardware and software people in, you know, close to each other. And uh, there are other things that, you know, Rolf and Brett and the Surface Pro 3 session will talk about um, and how we've actually, while you don't really know, we've integrated some software and, and hardware components uh, to invent new things. Like, for example, the Surface Pro 3 invented a new, uh, sorry, the Surface Pro 2, which also is in the Surface Pro 3, actually invented a new sleep state. It didn't exist before. Because we wanted to go in, into sleep and come out of sleep very, very quickly, but we didn't want to drain the battery. We were paranoid about battery life. And so we had worked with Windows. We built our own specific drivers. We had uh, custom components built. Um, and we invented, essentially, a new sleep state for Surface Pro 2, which comes across the Surface Pro 3, so that when you switch on your device, it comes on like lightning, both from full boot and from sleep state. And your battery saving is substantially higher than um, previous, uh, previous boots, uh, boot and sleep states. So here you can see the journey. I won't step into it in ton of detail. You know, Surface Pro uh, was a great product. Uh, then we learned a lot of things, like we needed good battery life um, and moved to Pro 2. Pro 2 was a breakout product in terms of battery life. We moved to the Haswell chip, um, and that was a great step. Surface Pro 3, I would say, was, is, was for our business customers, was the runaway product that everyone started adopting. And I think if you ask anybody that is using any form of Surface in their organization, that's probably the hero device that they have today. Uh, for a few reasons. One, screen size. Uh, screen size, in order to replace a laptop, you need full screen size. Uh, keyboard and typing experience was a ton better. And then we did a, did a, a couple other things under the hood that, um, um, that improved the overall workings of the device and, and made it um, better for IT in terms of IT features uh, that I'll cover a little later. And then Surface 3, which, I'll, uh, which I mentioned, is actually available for purchase through our retail and commercial resellers today. So, yeah. oh yeah! Thank you. <laughs> I mean, I only have like one more here. <laughs> I'm saving the juice. <laughs> um, so that's the journey of Surface. Does it make sense? Does it help you get a sense of where we're going? Uh, hopefully that does. Question. Um, I'm happy to take one now, and then I'll keep going. Yeah, um, the question, I'll repeat the question. Um, why did it take, I think there were two there. Why did it take you three versions? Um, and the second one is, is there something else coming? I think was the other question. Um, so the first question is, you know, we didn't take three versions. We had, there are certain people that loved Surface RT. You go out to consumers, uh, and those people bought that in the droves, not the complete droves that we would have liked, but there's a lot of people that still have Surface RTs today that love that product. Was Surface RT and the original Windows RT the right thing for business customers? You know, clearly not, right? And so we continue to involve that. Surface 2, also a great product. We had some enterprise customers. Delta uses Surface 2 for um, all their pilots. Um, and so there are customers that went with these products along the way. Of course, as we work through products, we take feedback. And so as we wanted to get to Surface 3, um, we wanted to move over to the um, Intel architecture, and that's what Surface 3 is. And I'll talk a little bit more about that. On the Pro line, the Pro line is, is the product we dreamed about. But um, what we had to do is, if I get my slides right, is we had to think really differently about the industry. I'm not going to take you through the pitch because this will probably get to your CIOs or whoever it is or your 
business decision makers, I want to tell you what's under the hood of this product. The Surface Pro 3, which gives you a sense of where, um, what we built and why, why it took us the three versions to get the Pro line, was when we launched the original Pro, there weren't industry components to build this product. As I said, we had to go build custom industry components. Anybody have any idea of how many custom components are inside the Surface Pro 3? <laughs> that is a true statement. <laughs> So someone said 50 and someone said 150. There are 100 custom components inside the Surface Pro 3 that we designed and got someone else to build. So you can't actually, it's physically impossible based on physics to build a device like this with, custom, with standard industry components from Intel and others. We actually had to go to each of them, the battery suppliers, the, the, the SSD, the Wi-Fi, we invented a new fan system. This thing's got a fan built into it because it's an i5 and an i7. This is, a, this is a powerhouse device, but you've got to cool it. There's no ways the fans of today can fit into this device. We actually reinvented the entire fan system instead of uh, pushing out in one area so when you have a laptop on your desk, it's like sorry, on your leg, it's like you've got an exhaust here that's going to burn your one leg. It actually distributes the heat evenly across the device, right? And so we had to go on a journey with the industry because we set this as the goal. And we literally, they would come back and say, oh, we can get this then. We're like, no, you don't get it. We want a tablet that can replace the laptop. And to do that, we have to be this then. They were like, oh, we have to go think about it. Yeah, please go think about it. And so we have been on a journey with all the component suppliers to get them to that so we can deliver on the promise of being a tablet that can be a laptop that answers that problem statement that I mentioned earlier. So that takes time. That, that, and um, while software can also do that and has to take time, hardware is a journey with the industry suppliers. Um, so to get to your second question, and then I'm going to pause and keep moving because I, I know there will be a lot. To get to your second question, Surface 3 launches today. You shouldn't expect anything anytime soon on Surface 3. Um, so that's a, a great product to go. Um, and Surface Pro 3 also doing well, being adopted quite significantly, and I'll talk about that in a little bit, a little bit later. Um, so also you should feel good about the, the, pro, the pro line. So um, this, as I mentioned, this device, two examples of those custom components. I mentioned the fan. The other, um, I mentioned earlier about the, um, the sleep state on the battery, um, but uh, there's also something else that we have to uh, think about, which is drain cycles on the battery, right? And so, because the quality of the battery is important, most laptops today have screws on the back, and you can take it out, and you know, after nine or 12 months, you can replace the battery. Like, when you speak to Ralph, or when you go see him, uh, do not ask him to put screws on the back of a Surface device. Just, just some hints, okay? Um, we are into premium experiences, and this thing is flush. You can't see anything, right? It's uh, built in a way that feels beautiful. Um, and so when you do that and you can't take it apart, then what happens with the battery? Well, you need to make sure you have the best battery. So we went to the battery suppliers and said, listen, you do about three to 400 drain cycles on a battery before it needs to be serviced. That's not good enough for us. We want 12 to 1300 drain cycles on our battery so it can last for four to five years. And so that's what we have in the Surface Pro device uh, so that you, don't need to, you shouldn't need to service the battery on it. Um, and so we go and solve all these problems, which you might say, well, that's sort of in the weeds. Of course it's in the weeds, but we have a, we have a truism on a problem statement that we're trying to solve that we discussed earlier. In order to do that, you know, we really focus on the detail to make that, make that real. So that's the Surface Pro device. Um, it is the workhorse uh, of the workloads. Uh, it's a great device, very popular. Um, and uh, uh, you know, most people who are walking around and have deployed Surface in their organization in the last month, uh, so in the last nine months, have been the Surface Pro 3. So, um, Oh, I've got, to be, I've got to be patient with the animations. Um, today we announced Surface 3. We discussed that. Surface 3 is part of the family. It's the baby cousin to Surface Pro 3. And how should you think about it? A lot of people say, well, this thing looks the same. 
Uh, well, yeah, it does, because it's a Surface. It's got a kickstand, it's got a keyboard, and it's great a premium experience. Remember, everything from Surface will be a premium experience, be business ready, and will bring through the rest of Microsoft. So how should I think about this? This device, if you think about versus Surface Pro 3, this device, if you, if you pick it, you're prioritizing portability over power. What does that mean? It means it's, running, it's not running an i5 or an r7. It's running the latest Cherry Trail, what's codenamed Cherry Trail, or um, Atom chipset. Um, and, that, that, and I'll share the specs. I have detailed slides on each of these to give you a sense. Um, and it's about, I would say, 80% of the power of the S Surface Pro 3 i3. It's not a bad performing device, but it's not the workhorse that the Pro 3 is. But we see a lot of customers and opportunities here for customers to um, use this in other parts uh, of their organization. Um, you would prioritize smaller screen size, essentially. This is a 10.8 inch, uh, Surface Pro 3 is a 12 inch device. You want something that's a little bit more affordable. This thing starts uh, for the 64 4 gig device at about six, sorry, 549 um, for the device versus Surface Pro 3 for the i3 starts at 799. i5 is uh, 899. And so you can see from a price perspective, it's a little bit more affordable. And then it has an LTE option. Because it's fanless, because it's not an i5 and one i7, we are able to get LTE because LTE has battery and power requirements that the core i products uh, can't, can't work through today. So that's how you should think about the Surface 3. So let's go through some of the details. So. As I mentioned earlier, um, it's, it is a tablet. And uh, if you think about the things that m most organizations will want to use an iPad for, it will, uh, this will be able to do all of those things and more. It's the thinnest and lighter Surface we've ever built. It's thinner and lighter. Uh, well, it's thinner than the Surface Pro 3 and significantly lighter than the Surface Pro 3. Obviously, it's you know, smaller screen size. Um, I mentioned the touch screen. It's, um, the brightest surface you've seen in terms of you know, actually screen output. Um, it has a similar 3 by 2 aspect ratio that the Surface Pro 3 has. So for applications, so we've uh, learned that 3 by 2 is the, the best, particularly if you're in something like Office with the ribbon open. Um, has 10 hours of, uh, of uh, video playback. Has three positions on the kickstand, which is a little different to the Pro device. The Pro device has... Um, uh, a frictionless kickstand and almost unlimited positions. Uh, this has three positions, and we made that sacrifice because of the size of the actual mechanism inside the kickstand, but also the cost. And so we wanted to, one of the things on this device was cost, and so we wanted to manage that. We did pick the three most popular positions on the Surface Pro 3 kickstand and made these the positions. So we've learned from the Pro 3 as well. Uh, so you should feel great. It is an awesome camera with the, the rear camera has autofocus, so that you can literally hold it up quite close and it will autofocus on something you want to take a picture of. And then it comes with an LTE option in, in some markets. So that, at a super high level, that's how you should think about the tablet pieces. Um, as a laptop, it's got everything that you'd expect from a laptop. I mentioned the, the Atom chip. Um, we really didn't want to call this thing the Atom chip because, as you probably know, Atom has got a, quite a legacy, particularly with customers like yourself. I encourage you not to think about this as the old Atom chips. This is not in the same category. It's an X7 processor. We are the first to ship with this processor, and it's, it's pretty performant in terms of what it can do. Obviously, it runs Windows, and runs uh, Windows Pro, um, and runs Office and, and all the desktop software. It's got all the ports. You can see it's got a mini display port, a USB 3 port, um, has micro USB as well for additional storage. Um, Sorry, micro SD for additional storage. But we've changed the power on this a little bit. We've changed the power <laughs> to a... Uh, man. Bar has just dropped. I mean, wow. <laughs> Come on. Um, we've changed the power port to uh, micro USB for charging. So um, we felt that for this device versus the Pro device, this device was much more, of a, uh, much more mobile, and you want to be able to at least hold the charge with a cell phone charger. Now, a two or three watt cell phone charger is going to struggle to like juice this guy, but the, um, 
but it ships with a decent watt charger in the box, but at least it will hold the charge on your cell phone charger. So if you're desperate, um, uh, or if you want to carry one charger, you just carry the Surface 3 charger, and you can charge your cell phone. I charged my cell phone almost from dead yesterday in about 25 minutes. It was fantastic, because it just pumps in the watts into my cell phone, which hopefully didn't fry my phone. But um, <laughs> So... <laughs> okay, frying my phone's good. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, great. Um, I mentioned it runs Windows uh, Pro. It will run, uh, run Windows 10, fully upgradable. Um, and then the usual things that you guys know about, um, about Windows with side by side multitasking, multiple accounts. Now, we talk about this because a lot of people that are in the business side of your business, when they think about a Windows tablet versus an iPad, they really do, they, it's hard for them to think about what do I get for this thing. And so it's, we call this out because you, you all know it, but for them, it's like what are you getting when you go for it with a device like this at an operating system level and an applications level um, that you should know that you won't get on w with, uh, with iPads. Um, and the last piece, if I remember correctly, is business ready. Now, um, I'll touch a little bit on this, and as I mentioned, Sanjeevani will do a little bit of a demo. But um, uh, the other sessions will go into a lot of details here. First of all, Surface 3 and Surface Pro 3, they're running Windows Pro. So you can manage them the way you manage any other Windows machine in your organization. You can update them with the tools that you're familiar with, whether it's System Center, whether it's one of our competitors, whether it's Intune, whether it's, you know, a... USB stick that you take to machine to machine, like, well, however you update and image your devices, you can image with these, uh, with these tablets. Uh, we've got some advanced security settings and configurations in the UFI. We went straight to UFI, um, and so you can switch off the camera, you can disable the USB port, you, there's actually software asset tagging inside the UFI if you want to do asset tagging at the software level. Uh, you can configure a bunch of things inside UFI that um, you'll hear more about. Obviously, it's Windows. You've got, you can get these devices, you join the domain, you can manage them with group policy, uh, all those sort of uh, good things. It is also one of the most durable devices from a tablet perspective. We actually tested it with uh, some of our uh, military customers, and we asked them to take, you know, take this to the North Pole, take this to the desert, take this to, like, where do you need to go? Um, and uh, it's out of the box. It's really, really um, durable. Obviously, it's got the Surface Pro device has got space for the fan, and the Surface 3 is a little bit more tighter and more sealed. But we have also third-party accessory partners that um, provide uh, additional uh, uh, cases, ruggedized cases for construction, for manufacturing, uh, for kids in school um, who might drop the device. And so we have a bunch of different third-party accessories uh, uh, for those sort of things, but also for... Uh, you know, charging carts for a hospital, uh, you know, um, cockpit mounts for, for airlines. We have a ton of third-party accessories that really complete out the durability and uh, practicality. Ships with a docking station, so not only does Surface Pro have one, but also the Surface 3 has a docking station so that it can be docked because uh, it's a Windows machine and we want this to be used um, uh, like a laptop too. And then we have uh, the usual warranties and accidental damage and hardware protection to make sure that uh, if anything happens that shouldn't happen, that you have that usual protection. So, sure. Yeah, um, and I have a few slides later. So the question was... Um, where do you use Pro versus where do you, Surface Pro 3 versus Surface 3? It's a great question. And um, I have some slides that give you some color to it. If you want to paint, I'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> that was a good pitch. <laughs> I've got to give you. <laughs> um, we, um, the Pro is the workhorse. If you're doing anything that you're creating or developing or crunching Excel or just generally want extra power on hand, you want the Pro device. If you're replacing a laptop, you want the pro. If you, 
if you're replacing someone that has high-end laptop needs, you, you, you want the Pro device. The Surface 3 device, there are clear examples where Surface 3 is great for. Surface 3 is great for K through 12 education. Pro 3 is better for higher ed education, because when you get into university, you want a fully-fledged laptop, you're going to do some advanced things. Probably Pro 3 is the better device for that. Um, Surface 3 is also the, probably the best Surface for line of business. So whether it's a cockpit mount uh, or retail mobile point of sale device that someone walks around, um, uh, line of manufacturing floor where someone wants um, a great uh, experience to be able to hold it even with a pen so they can draw on their, um, uh, uh, on their, on their ink, uh, on uh, sketches related to the, the, the manufacturing floor and the processes that go on there. Those are typically where, where it's good for. Where, where we are learning through our early adopters that I will, um, I'll share a little later is that Surface 3 is also filling a gap slightly, on, slightly further down on the price point on laptops. And sometimes it works because of performance and sometimes it doesn't. And so you need to go and test it is my feedback. Um, and so uh, the, if you're looking for the power of the power, you need the Surface Pro 3. I would expect most people with a laptop will want a Surface Pro 3. But there are some users at the bottom end of laptop experiences that will be okay with the Surface 3. Um, as I mentioned, it's pretty powerful. I, I traveled on vacation to my you know, home country, South Africa. And I was there for two weeks. And I took the Surface 3 with me to see how long it would go for. And of course, I wasn't doing anything significant. I was traveling. And I did a bit of email and some you know, link calls and it was fine, right? Um, but anybody that's doing really advanced things will not like the Surface 3. But I have some slides on that to give, to give some more sense on that. Um, so to give you a little bit of sense, let me ask Sanjeevni to come up, and she'll give you um, some demos and some of the features we have touched on. Can you guys hear me OK? All right. Perfect. I don't have anything attractive stuff to give you. <laughs> wow. No, my value add. I'm going to hold the card so I can feel the passion. All I'll right. watch so I can see who jumps up first. Here's what. Everybody, this is Joe. He's really excited about Surface. <laughs> Here's what um, Cyril talked about uh, some of the UFI features that we build in, and you know, it, it helps us really improve the device. So I'm going to show two, two pieces of the demo. One, I'll show, I'll show you some of the UFI improvements that we've made to Surface Pro 3 recently. I'll show you that. And then I'll switch gears and show you how easy it is to deploy Surface 3 as well. So let me start with the UFI one first. So uh, you know, here's an example where most of you are really looking for ways to be able to control what your end users have access to. So one of the recent improvements that we did was we are giving you now the ability to turn off the SD card reader. So I have a SD card reader that I'm using in my Surface Pro 3 here. So you know, I have a whole bunch of documents and photos and videos. So what we will do is you know, some organizations are really careful about what their end users can bring in and out of the organization. And they really ask us to turn off the SD card reader. So this is how you would do it. So because the setting is in the UFI itself, and many of you know, like the only way I can pull it up is when I boot up the machine. So I'm going to try and boot up the machine here. OK, so now we are in the UFI menu. And here it is. Under the advanced security, device security options, there are multiple options for you. So you can actually turn off, to, to point that Cyril was making, you can actually turn off the front camera, rear camera, or what have you. In, in this case, I'm actually disabling the micro SD card reader. 
And when I exit my setup, I need to save the configuration. And as the device boots up, let's give it a second. OK. Now let me go back to my Explorer, and you'll see that the SD card reader has been turned off, so you can't even get to it. So that's just an example of the UFI improvements that we've done. So you can actually turn off the rear camera, you can turn off the front camera, or what have you. OK, now I'm going to switch gears and show you deploying Surface 3. How many of you have deployed Surface Pro 3? Awesome. This will seem very familiar to all of you. All right. I will get to that. Yes, there is, a, there is a way to do that. I'm glad you asked that question. I was planning to close my demo with that, but I'll address it. So yes, there is, as part of the updates, there is an MSI that you can use to not do it for individual machines, but push it down for throughout your, all the devices that you have. OK. <laughs> so let me, so I'm going to use MDT to run my deployment, because this should be very familiar to most of you. So quickly here, uh, this, this experience should not be surprising to most of you, because you probably do this every day. Um, uh, for those who do not have Surface Pro 3 deployed today, under uh, out-of-box drivers, you can see Microsoft Corporation. In this case, I have Surface Pro 3 that I have deployed. That's the scenario. But even if you, know, if you did not have any Surface Pro 3 deployed, you won't see that folder. That's the way to think of it. So under uh, Microsoft, I will create a new folder for Surface 3. And just like Surface Pro 3, we, we will have the drivers and firmware drivers and updates available through Download Center. So what I have done in this case is I've actually downloaded the drivers onto a folder um, on my desktop here. So I'll just navigate to the drivers. So here it is. And as a best practice, make sure you're importing drivers even if there are duplicates. And then it'll start importing. The warnings that you're seeing, some of the drivers support 32-bit as well as 64-bit, and that's the warning that you're seeing. So that's the, you know, as it completes that execution, it's basically importing the drivers from my folder onto and really getting ready for deployment here. Once you do that, go back to your deployment share, and then you update your deployment share, and... Pretty much at this point, you can use your deployment wizard and start deploying it. So it's as simple for those of you who've done it for Surface Pro 3, it looks exactly like that. So that's the same concept that you need to apply for Surface 3. With that, I'll hand it back to you. Give me a card. Rock, paper, scissors. One, come on, one, two, three. Rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, thank you, Sanjeevni. That gives you a small taste. The other sessions will go much deeper into those types of things, but to give you a sense of not only we're we trying to make it simple in the product and a premium experience, and trying to make it simple in the deployment and consumption of the updates and make it easier for you to do um, inside your organization. Uh, so to give you a sense of how we think about that same device dilemma and what, we were, what I mentioned earlier, think about the laptop being on the right-hand side. Yes, the right-hand side. And think about the tablet being on the left. And it's a continuum. And the Surface Pro device is much more of a laptop. 
Um, and when you think about it, you, you, know, you need tons of power. Uh, you're replacing a full laptop, heavy multitasking, running demanding software. Whereas the other one we spoke about earlier, Surface 3, is a little bit closer to being uh, a tablet. Um, that can also do some laptop work. And so you think here about what, you, what you're using it for, prioritizing power, uh, sorry, uh, portability of a power, et cetera, the things we spoke about. It's sort of the continuum. You can see um, we actually, on the day that we announced uh, Surface Pro 3, uh, back in May, June of, uh, of last year, we announced BMW, Louis Vuitton, and Coca-Cola, who, who were early adopters who had committed to buy Surface Pro 3 before we even announced it. And since then, there have been tens and tens of customers that have gone with Surface Pro 3, many of you in the audience. Um, and then recently, um, when we announced Surface 3, we also announced three other additional customers that agreed to purchase Surface 3, uh, Emirates Airlines, Prada, and BASF for different things, Emirates for their cockpit, uh, Prada for more uh, uh, retail, and then BASF much actually for their lower end laptops. Um, and so um, since then we've announced uh, about 10 schools between US, UK, and some in, in Europe that have adopted Surface 3. Um, and we will have some announcements that are in the thousands of units in the next month around Surface 3 and additional Surface Pro customers as well. So watch out for that. Um, so that's how you think about the devices and, and, um, and where we're seeing some momentum to give you a taste. This is, in general, whether it's Pro or Surface 3, where we're seeing the most adoption, and not only specifically by industry, but by scenario within each industry. So uh, you can imagine for anybody that has a sales force that is out there, that is mobile, that wants to be in front of customers, typically is very little time in the office, they're ultra-mobile, the Surface is a great device for them. Uh, within government, same sort of thing, mobile workers. Education, if you think about the one-to-one -one learning scenario where each child gets a device or each higher ed student gets a device, Surface is a great device for that. Um, laptop replacement and finances. In healthcare, um, doctors, they love Surface Pro 3. In fact, out of <clears throat> all the users, the, the Surf, even the Surface Pro 2, the doctors were the first to adopt it. They even went to Best Buy and Microsoft Store, bought the device, took it back to the hospital and said to everybody, this is the thing I'm now using. And it's, it's relatively easy to understand because they want the power of a laptop when they're in, in their office working with the patient, but they don't have to use this big PC mounted on the wall. They can actually have this device in front of their patient and talk to them about it. But the same device can be used on their ward rounds. They can use pen, they can sign things, they can navigate their um, patient record system, and it runs all their patient record systems and can be secure because they're doctors, they carry all of our PII information. And so, very popular device for doctors. Nurses prefer Surface 3. Slightly smaller, slightly more compact, slightly more mobile, longer battery life. Just to give you a sense how things play out there. Uh, engineering, uh, engineering and design both have adopted Surface Pro 3 quite well. Um, retail, and retail is mostly around operations and um, <coughs> retail um, mobile point of sale. And then airlines, we spoke about the electronic flight back. So just give you a sense about where things are, are playing out. And I'm, I'm conscious of time, so I'm going to pause that question until we get towards the end. Um, so this next section, I'm going to hang on for a section. This next section, I'm going to ask for a few things. I'm going to ask that there are no cameras and no pictures. Um, I'm, I'm playing a video. I'm going to ask that you don't um, play that or try to record the video. I'm going to request that if you uh, want to take notes, take mental notes. The point of this section is to really give you a sense of how we're investing in hardware and in Surface. This is not just a one-hit wonder. You don't do what, we, what I'm going to take you through to be a one-hit wonder. Um, it really is about how we innovate and how we do rapid development. The lab that I'm going to talk to you about is, doesn't exist in, uh, uh, anywhere. Um, it's a long-term investment on hardware. And I'm watching very carefully. I will own your firstborn if I see cameras. Um, <laughs> so this is a state-of-the-art hardware lab. It is in the building next to mine called Building 87. We keep it as plain as possible. But it's essentially there to drive two things, advanced prototyping, and perfection. And you'll see that as you walk through these things. These, this is billions of dollars of investment in order to deliver on the things we need to deliver. If we want to adjust the kickstand, 
by one millimeter, we want to see it that day. We don't want to wait weeks or months. If you want to change the color or the material on something, we want to see it that day. If we want to see all of those things together and actually build it on site, we want to see it that day. And so this is what this lab does. It's 100,000 square feet, uh, and it's, it's a massive, massive building with multiple floors, and it brings together a bunch of different skills that typically are either not at one company or not in the same building from one company, from mechanical engineers to audio experts, video experts, to engineering, to software people, all in the same facility so that teams can huddle around models, can huddle around prototypes, and get a sense as a team and brainstorm together on how to solve problems. Uh, okay. Um, so, uh, pretty much. Pretty much. Um, nothing leaves a building that can be disclosed or shared with anybody. It's a highly confidential building. Um, we do take, uh, you know, at Microsoft we have executive briefings that some of you might have come on, and so occasionally we will make uh, those customers sign their life away, and then we take them on a tour of this building, um, and it's uh, impressive. It's an impressive building. So we can make almost anything you can imagine. Um, you know, we have 3D printers to build really specific, not a 3D printer that you and I would go and buy at Best Buy. <laughs> Let me just be clear, right? These are racks and racks of 3D printers that you cannot pick up. They are really, really good prototype 3D printers. Um, we have CNC machines, so we can actually build high quality parts very, very quickly with real precise dimensions of what it will look like and feel like. There's uh, water jet machines, so we can cut metal to the point where uh, we get to the granularity of what we're looking for. Looking for. We can cut things that uh, uh, only diamonds can cut. Uh, we cut things to the, to the precise level that we need, it, we need it to be. We have full paint mixing spray facilities, so we can paint anything at any color. It's not a mistake, the color that we have. There are thousands of surfaces with different colors in our labs, and it's not a mistake. Uh, we really test everything and see what it feels like. Um, we have listening chambers. This actual picture is the inside of our, our deepest listening chamber, um, and it's basically there to block out all sound. When you, if you go inside one of these things, it's a little freaky because they close the door, and because of the protection of the sound, no sound bounces off anything. The, the walls have these cones on it that prevent the sound from bouncing back. So, like, I would say somebody to, to somebody who's just this far away, and they can barely hear me because it's, it basically feels like sensory deception and prevention. Uh, and so this is intended so we can test pure, perfect sound so that when sound comes out of our device, we know exactly what it's going to feel like and then we can adjust it and then put it into the real world. We have the same thing for, um, for RF isolation. There's so much RF going out there, whether it's cell phones or Wi-Fi, that we want to be able to test in an isolated place. So we do that too. Um, we have the same for video. Um, so we have video testing labs so that we can ensure perfect images. We can test multiple different lightings and settings, daylight settings, nighttime settings, direct sunlight settings, we can do that all within like 60 seconds on a particular screen and how we think about that screen. Um, so uh, we seek perfection. When I mentioned earlier about a premium experience, that's our goal. You can't do that without a lab like our 100,000 square foot lab. So to give you a sense, I'm going to watch the audience very carefully and I'm going to play you a video. Hopefully play you a video. I'm going to try to play you a video. Microsoft is all in on making Surface one of the greatest hardware devices in the world. This building allows us to design, build, and test 
and iterate over and over and over again to reach perfect products. Eight separated labs that are now together under one massive roof. The fidelity of the problem solving, it's at a different level. As a hardware designer, my expectations were blown away. It's that place where people come together to collaboratively design something. It's a 100,000 square foot building, and we've consumed the whole thing specifically for hardware labs. CNC machines, laser cutting machines, water jet machines, a huge spray booth. There's poly jet machines. These are all like rapid prototyping devices. Down to the micron level of accuracy. Having everything in one place is really incredible. We'll see somebody working on a model that's totally different than what we're thinking of. It can inspire like a new creative way of doing it. And that happens all the time. We had a meeting where we talked about a bunch of ideas. We're going to have the same meeting tomorrow, and we're going to look at the parts on the table. I haven't seen anything like it. We seek perfection. That's the goal for Surface. Perfect products. Now, this building allows us to get closer and closer to perfect. So uh, in closure, I wanted to talk to you about uh, and just close with how we think about first-party hardware generally at the company. You know, Surface is the product that I'm passionate about, but I'm also passionate about the other products of the company. On the stage yesterday, you saw the Surface Hub and you saw HoloLens. Uh, in, uh, recently, you also know about all the other products from Lumia to Band. When we think about these products, we think about them as devices your employees deserve. They are premium experiences. They are centered around productivity. Even Xbox is centered around productivity. For gamers, it's perfect for productivity. But you think about Hub, that's team productivity. Surface is about individual productivity. Lumia is about ultra-mobile productivity. HoloLens is about holographic productivity. It's all about driving additional product productivity in a world where you need great experiences and inter integration between Windows 10, Office 365, and the hardware that your users use. That's what we're delivering on right now, and you should hold us accountable to deliver on this moving forward. So with that, thank you. Thanks for the time. Hopefully we ended you enough time. And uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.